Section 6.4 is on the central limit theorem, and this is based off of sampling distributions. So first thing we need to do is define what a sampling distribution is for the mean, because we're going to be focusing on a sampling distribution of the mean. And this is just a probability distribution of all possible sample averages, which is x bar, of a given sample size, which remember we use n to notate sample size. Okay, so here's the thing. We've dealt with probability distributions in the past, like the binomial distribution or distributions of data. But the important thing here is it's not just data, it's averages. And all of these averages are specifically sample averages. Another thing to point out that it's different from is a sampling error. And this is an error that results from using a sample, not a population. So the focus here is there's two types of error. There's sampling error and non-sampling error that were discussed in prior chapters, where a non-sampling error is like you made a math mistake, you asked a biased question, you reported numbers wrong. But a sampling error is only because you used a sample. So there's no other reason that the sample mean or that sample standard deviation would not match the population values. It's only gonna not match because a sample was used and not a population. But we're gonna be focusing on a sampling distribution of the mean, knowing that we're using samples. So now let's go ahead and consider the following set of data. Imagine I have the numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8. Like let's say I have four kids and these are their ages. They're a 2-year-old, a 4-year-old, a 6-year-old, and an 8-year-old. So if I found the average age of my kids, I would get 5 years old, and the standard deviation would be 2.236. Remember, on average, how far you're off if you're not a 5-year-old. Uh, notice that we used mu and sigma, the population symbols for average and standard deviation, because we're considering this a population, like I only have four kids, and that would be my population of kids. But forget the kid piece for a second. Now I want to work with a sampling distribution of the means. So what I want to do is take samples of size 2, but specifically I want to find all samples of size 2. So I've listed them here. Um, we are going to have to do this with replacement because my sample size 2 is not less than 5% of my population, so I can't treat it as independent, and I need this to be independent. So this lists every combination that could happen. Imagine I put the numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8 into a bowl. I pull out the first number and I pull out a 2, but then because of replacement, when that 2 was put back, maybe I grab it again the second time. Maybe I grabbed a 2 and then an 8, or maybe a 6 and an 8, whatever the case is. You're going to grab different things, but if we listed everything that could happen, all the samples, they're listed here, and for each of them, we found the average. Like in the example, if I put a 2 first and an 8 second, we consider that different than picking an 8 first and a 2 second, but notice the average of those two numbers is 5, which matches my population. That's not always going to be the case. Like had I picked 2 and 6, my average would be 4, and it does not match my population. This is what we just talked about as a non-sampling error. It's I'm sorry, is this, yeah, as a sampling error, is just that I picked a sample and not a population. So it was not non-sampling, it was a sampling error. But anyways, everything's listed here. So now what I want to do is I want to find the average of all of these averages. Those are all sample averages, and I want to find the mean of those means. So I'm going to take all of these numbers divide them by 16, because there were 16 numbers, and I get an average of my averages. Notice it's the same here. And then I want to do the same thing with this standard deviation. Remember, I'm taking all of these numbers and finding a standard deviation, although we should point out that we're treating all of the x bars as if they're a population set. So let's put that into words. Since we used every x bar possible, the values were treated as a population set. Okay, now we need to look at that information further.
Now we're going to look at a distribution of all those means. And for us, that'll mean we'll make a frequency table and a frequency distribution. But the way that I got this frequency distribution is I considered the averages, the X bars, my data. So what I did, and you can see it better on your page, is I found how many times was the average two. And according to this, I only found it once. But what I would have done was come over to this page. Here's an average of two. No, 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 no. Okay, so I can see that an average of two showed up once. And now I'm going to look for how many times was the average three. And so I go back to my page, and here's a three. No, no, no. Here's a three. No, 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 no. Okay, so three showed up twice, and that's how I made that distribution table that we're looking at right here. If I was to graph it in terms of a histogram, I would see this picture in the right-hand box. So what we're supposed to notice from this information is that the distribution that we have in the table and the graph is bell-shaped. So even though the original data wasn't, remember the original data was just each number with a frequency of one. It was just the number two, the number four, the number six, the number eight. If I made a table, I would have had two showing up once, four showing up once, six showing up once, and eight showing up once. And so I would have had a, a uniform distribution. So that's going to be important. The other thing is to compare the distribution to the population. And so down below, I just restated the population mean and standard deviation of the numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8. And then of all those samples we found, all 16, we had found of those 16 numbers a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 1.85. So what we care about is both of them have the same mean, but the standard deviation is smaller for sample size 2, right? The standard deviation went down for the sample versus the population.